Mog day. It's mog day. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a unimog. We're gonna build a unimog. I don't know. We're just gonna go for it. Oh this is crazy. Woo! Big, big update. Family hug. <laughs> Drew has never driven stick. <gasps> there it goes. <laughs> uh, this thing's a beast. <laughs> mog dog. We got a unimog. And it feels overwhelming. <laughs> feels very confusing. Good morning, guys. Good morning. It is, um, it's pretty early. We had to wake up early to talk to some Unimog people in the UK. Unimog. They are five hours ahead of us, so this has equaled just a lot of early mornings talking to people in Germany, in the Netherlands, in the UK. This is a pretty intense process. Unimogs have a lot of different variations, a lot of different components. A lot of learning. Learned a lot the last month. It's a huge, huge learning curve with getting into this world. There's an incredible amount of variables to consider, so. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's a little daunting, and we think we have something figured out, and then we change our mind. I think we gotta get back to work and make a decision between a few of these. You think it's come down to just a few vehicles now? We're kind of a few weeks into this process, and it feels overwhelming, <laughs> feels very confusing. This is, I mean, this is a huge decision. We could just build in this crappy military box on that one. No. That would save us a lot of money. No. And leave us no. pretty unsatisfied. And you wouldn't be able to stand up. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed Pick again. One. I'm overwhelmed. What day is it? It's Mog Day. It's Mog Day. I mean, it's that day where we call to buy a vehicle. Today is the day. We're doing it. Yep. We're buying a Unimog. <sighs> this is crazy. We can still back out. I guess we could. I, ooh, man, I can't even believe it. I'm like really excited and really nervous at the same time. <sighs> Let's do it. Let's make the call. Let's do it. Hi, Paul. This is Savannah and Drew. Hello. We uh, we wanted to give you a call because uh, we think we would like to buy one of the 1300Ls you have. Yeah, the X ambulance one specifically. Fantastic. Yeah, not a problem at all. I put this unimog against your name, so if anyone came on, obviously I'm not I'm not going to sell this vehicle in the meantime until we've. Uh, Obviously awesome. decided what you would like to do and not. Well, we are we are very excited. Um, yeah, yes. we've been thinking about buying a <laughs> Unimog for quite a long time. So this is a big day for us. Yeah. <laughs> Once um, we get the ball rolling and uh, we're finished and get it across to you, you'll be uh, you'll be very pleased. Thank you so much, Thanks. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Fantastic. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, uh, you too. Sweet. This is so weird. <laughs> it is weird. It seems like it's happening. Oh my god. It'll look a lot sweeter once we paint it. <laughs> this is crazy. It's camo right now. Come on. Family hug. <laughs> He's Family... lost in there. <laughs> this whole face is squished. Uh, did it. I can't even believe this is ours. <laughs> it's gonna be ours, I think so. This is ours now. As long now. as everything plays out right here. <sighs> wow. Woo! <laughs> mog dog. This guy's gonna be a mog dog. It's so crazy. There's so much work to do. And now I gotta go crazy about the perfect layout because the box will be a little smaller than what we have now. So I gotta redesign a few things. My brain is stirring.
Ich will da bequem dran sitzen. Dann kommt natürlich auch noch manchmal die Forderung von Leuten, ein Festbett. Ein Festbett, alles zusammen, das, was man da verlangt, da müsste der Uni... Where are the festbed? Bei der hier dargestellten Möglichkeit 1 ist der Aufbau sure. hinten schon um 50 cm verlegt. Dabei bin ich dann hängen geblieben. Eine ausziehbare Couch... Are you understanding any of this? Uh, festbed means bed. Oh, we we have English yeah, subtitles. You know? Yeah, we have English. So, are you understanding what's going on there? Yeah, he's talking about his different layout designs. Now he built a frame. We are here at a park in Tucson, Arizona, and our friend Rachel is bringing her F eight hundred. Yeah. Wildlands fire truck. Drew has never driven stick nope. in his life. A bonus is this is a very large vehicle, so probably closest thing we can find to a Unimog without finding a Unimog. Now I learned to drive stick when I was probably 16 or 17 from my dad. He had a standard truck that I learned to drive, but I have not driven stick since literally that time period in my life so i'm also going to get in the driver's seat and try to freshen up my skills if i remember anything at all it might be like starting completely from scratch to be honest let's do it i'm excited let's go that thing's amazing All right, guys, closest thing we could find to a Unimog in the country. So, uh, we'll see what we can do. This, is, uh, this thing's a beast. Pretty excited. You want to just give us a small lowdown on what your rig is? Yeah, Fred. This is Fred. Uh, he is a 1995 F800 chassis uh, with actually a 5.9 Cummins that was Ford stamped, original to the build. Um, 12 valve diesel and it has a um, five speed split rear shift Allison transmission. So, what was your vehicle in its previous life? Oh, it was a Wildland Fire Crew buggy. So, it um, would haul eight to ten forest crew members to cut fire lines and tend the forest in Nevada, North Lake Tahoe was the last nice. place it was but it was originally built for blm oregon it's a beauty are you ready drew oh, i'm excited ready? I'm yeah excited. are you excited yeah. i'm excited to get i feel like I, <laughs> you I, have your work cut out should i you. watch you drive it first yeah i think so yeah. yeah so um or if you have it in gear you just have your clutch pushed in or neutral i'm like i just roll like rolls. i don't even have to touch the gas for low first right, right. like i'm not it's just like it's idle, basically. It's super easy, right? <laughs> um, yeah, here, hop in. Oh, jeez. You got it. You see, you see, that's that's, one. that's first. Mm-hmm. Shit. Okay. And now push up. That's reverse. That's reverse. Okay, so I okay. So I'm if you go a, from I'm, neutral straight up, you're actually in low second. So this is this is low second. Uh huh. Oh, so it's got low all of the gears. And then high for all of the gears. Okay. All right, let's go. Right. Let's get him stolen for the first time on camera. Here we go. Give her a second. And now you're gonna, neutral. Are you going to push the clutch in? You're going to release right. the clutch as you push on the gas. So we got brake. And then... So if you're on a hill right now, you'd be rolling. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah! Jumped a little bit. Jumped a little bit. Okay. Now we're trying to hear it. So it's, you can just, just get, drive around getting used to that. Is your foot all the way off the clutch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And then I would turn the circle and then get up to speed on the next round. Accelerate. Okay, now push the clutch in, let go of the gas. Push it all. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I did it. Yeah. You did it. You actually did it much better than I did the first time. <laughs> Okay. All right. 
Um, I yeah, I have no idea. Like first, first second, second, third, and then clutch and oh, brake and start. You don't have to do any of that. You can just turn it on. Sometimes it likes a little touch of gas. Sometimes a little touch of diesel, but it's fine. That's going to be first, so it's going to be real low. You can try it. It's fine. Okay. But gently, because it's in first. Right. So now you're going to want to shift up to second. Sorry, Drew. <laughs> precious cargo. I didn't stall it. I stalled it did twice. I? I don't think I did. I stalled it twice. I, I almost did. Did you, did you stall no, it? No, no, I, I, I didn't get into gear it. the one time. Uh, but I didn't okay. stall it. Okay, okay. Because I was already stuck in neutral. They both did an excellent job. <laughs> My truck is fine, it is not ruined. <laughs> I did okay. I didn't do great or terrible. How do you guys feel about it? Feel good? I feel good. I definitely had some moments where it came back to me, like with my feet in the shifter, but I didn't remember how to stop very well. Yeah, the stop that was, part is thinking a Stopping's more. important. Slowing down is the worst part. You did really good though. Well, there, was, there was a few jumpy <laughs> moments when I was in the back seat, not, not naming any names. When I first bought this, I did not know how to drive it. And it, hey. uh, it, it was a big learning curve and yeah. I definitely uh, threw some bumpy roads. You gotta do it. And you do great now. So. And, and yeah, six years later, <laughs> there's you know, hope. I only stole it a couple times here. Right <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> just wanna... There's hope for us. Yeah. There is. There's yeah. hope. We did it. All right. You're gonna Congrats, be able guys. to do it, Drew. Good job. All right. So a little update on the composite habitat box. We wanted to make our own, or rather source panels, and then construct our own, maybe from a kit. After doing quite a bit of research and trying to source our own panels, we're finding it pretty challenging if you're not sourcing on a commercial or industrial level. Particularly in North America, there just isn't a lot of places providing this, especially in the composite like habitat camper space. There's only a couple companies that are even doing it in North America. And we did want to go with one of them, but we had a couple hangups. So end of the day, we kind of thought about it some more and we're going back to Atkinson and they've built a bunch of camper boxes in the past. They have a reputable source for panels. So we're just gonna go with them because a few things, one, it's gonna come on the truck, already done. Um, that was another part of getting a panel kit here was we were gonna be paying a ton of shipping. So since we're already paying shipping for the vehicle to come here, with the box already built on the truck, we're gonna save the cost of the extra shipping for the panels, so that'll cancel out some of the extra cost to have them do it. And it was like pretty close price-wise. The biggest problem is it's setting us back with our timeline quite a bit. The other big part of this, which is Unimog specific, is the subframe. Unimogs have a torsion-free subframe, meaning it just flexes on top of the frame of the vehicle. So the camper box has to flex independent of the vehicle movement. And that is a really specific thing that a lot of people in North America are not familiar with. And we just didn't feel comfortable taking on that project ourselves. Yes, we have the ability to fabricate things. And if we had the drawings for it, we could definitely make it. But it's getting the design that has been really difficult for us and we don't wanna design it ourselves. It is very intense and very specific. And if we get it wrong, that camper could rip itself apart on the back of the Unimog. So we're seeing all of these hurdles with bringing the Unimog to North America and then trying to find these composite panels, 
find the design or someone to make a subframe for us and it just seems like a real headache when the vehicle's already sitting at a shop that specializes in unimogs that will make our subframe make our camper box obviously we don't want them to outfit the camper box we want to build that ourselves we're just looking for the box to be constructed and for that subframe to be made correctly so we just wanted to hop on camera this morning and kind of document this part of the process that we told atkinson to go ahead with making the box and the subframe which extends our timeline quite a lot and we're not really sure when it's actually going to get here it takes a little bit of pressure pressure off but it also puts pressure on our timeline so I'm happy and I'm a little bit stressed out about it. I know we'll be really excited to get the vehicle with the camper already on the back of it and not have to worry about any of that because we were thinking we were going to have to construct that whole box ourselves. Right. So the plan going ahead is to build everything we can build ahead of time. We're going to mock up like a platform and build all our cabinets and prep everything we can do, which would be a lot of the work. And anything we can't do, we'll just have to wait till the vehicle's actually here, but that's what we're gonna do. So when it gets here, we're installing things quicker and deal with the parts that we can't deal with until it's here at that point. I don't know, we're just gonna go for it. All right, we'll see how it shakes out in the next few months. We're ready. Woo! Big. Big update. Big update. What is it? I don't know. No, you know. We just got confirmation that the boat carrying the Mog has left port yeah. from Liverpool. Yep. And it started its voyage to the States. As you can see, we've been using this app and a few different websites to track the boat that the Unimog is going on to. And right now it is sitting in the port at Liverpool, that's where it's being loaded onto the boat. And then they tell us it'll take about 10 days to come into New York City, which seems super quick to me. Yeah, we got a few photos last week of it on the trailer being taken to the port, which was really exciting mm -hmm. to see it in its current form with the box on there. And now it is on the ship, which will be leaving here soon or it's already left maybe i don't know yeah yeah it's exciting it's finally happening it still doesn't seem real i don't think it will seem real until it's here like in the driveway so that is your update of the day the mog is on a boat it is leaving the uk and it is u.s bound it's getting close we gotta get back to work we have a lot to do we have so much to do so we'll see you in a few days What's the word? The Unimog has landed on U.S. soil. The Mog has landed? Yeah, we woke up this morning to the email that it's here. We can see on the map that the, the ship is in the New York City port. It's actually New Jersey. It's in the Newark port. And we are making our final payment to the shipping company so that they can release it. We got confirmation from both sides. Confirmed. Both from uh, US and from the UK. Yep. Mog has landed stateside. So now we just gotta pay this last shipping. <laughs> They're gonna bring it here on a truck. Yeah. The Mog is finally stateside. Should be here in the next, I don't know, two to four or five days, depending on when they release it. And it gets on a truck. We've just been making decisions about planning for building for staring at photos of this vehicle for a year pretty much a year at this point and it's finally here to get the invoice that the ship is in the port it's going to be coming to us going to be delivered right to the shop it's it's unbelievable I don't even know what to feel right now. It's truly insane. It doesn't even feel real. No, it's real. She lives. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> that thing's amazing. <laughs> What's happening, Drew? The mog's here. The mog's here. So weird. Yeah. 
trail. <laughs> It's here. It's so little and huge at the same time. It's so weird. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. Oh man, he barely made it in there. I didn't barely You're make gonna it. have to lift the dogs up. They're not gonna be able to get in there. Yeah, really. Oh my god! <laughs> That's crazy. This is so weird. We have a glove box. We haven't had a glove box in years. That's, that's what she got. That's why we bought it. Oh, it's really nice. Look at all the cab lining. It's really nice. It's in good shape. Oh my god. No way. What? It's here. The gun hatch. Look at this wheel. It's huge. It's so I don't know. high. I'm too short for this one. The gun hatch. Can you open the gun hatch? You can. <laughs> don't ask me how. I've never opened a gun hatch. We got the spotlight still. <laughs> oh, yeah. You alright? I'm coming down from the stress. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. You're losing it. There's so much less like dash space or I guess like room between the dash and the windshield it's yeah. like closer than I thought it was it's really weird to look at pictures of this thing and then compare it in real life it's just a little bit different than I thought it would be not in a bad way it's just kind of like the proportions of everything look Drew we got your ashtray yeah I was gonna pick up smoking this is your two-wheel drive at the top and then four-wheel drive and then four wheel drive with the differential lock. Oh, cool. <laughs> Should we start it up? I think this held a gun or something. I'm not really sure what that was. It looks like a rifle holder. Yeah. I'm thinking this extra knob might be how you switch into those working gears, but I don't really know. Okay, I'm, I'm actually, this is nice to have. Fully press the clutch. That's your clutch right there. And turn the key. Okay, I think I turned it off. I want to try that again. <laughs> this little bar is rattling so bad. <laughs> I'll hold on to it. There you go. I gotta let the air pressure get to 18 bar. I can feel it. There's one, two, three, four. You hear the switch over? Mm -hmm. Five. You're not gonna start up there. So I need. Okay, so. Since we're just going down the driveway, should you start in one or two? Lift knob to allow lever to drop forward. Okay, lift knob. I think we can drive. Can we drive? We're gonna put it in one and we're gonna try to go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, you don't have to even give it gas in one. Woo! We're moving! <laughs> Alright guys, you ready to go for a ride? The guys are ready for their first ride in the MOG. The Uni MOG. We're gonna make it official and these guys are about to become MOG dogs. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> I don't think you're making that jump, buddy. Up, up, Mattel. Come on. I'm kidding, I'll pick you up. One guy. And there's another guy. Your new house. What do you think, guys? What do you guys think? <laughs> Let's take it for a ride. Let's take it for a rip, bro. Go for a rip, are you, bud? 
see if they like it because they're so high. Let's see what it's like on the road. I'm so excited just to ride in it. I'm not even the one driving. I just want to see what it feels like to be in a Unimog going down the road. Yeah, let's go give it a shot. Sorry. <laughs> well, I need to go up already, don't I? Yeah. I think I went down. Uh -huh. You gotta give me a minute, I'll get it. I think I'm in seven. Yeah, I think you are too. I feel like this is so fast. I know, we're going like <laughs> not fast at all. Oh my god, it's so tall. <laughs> Should I go up? It's like a fishbowl in here. Uh, I guess I got room still. Well, let's let it rip. We got a minute here. Like maybe 50. Something no one said in a Unimog before. Can we please slow down? Slow down. Turn. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was not that bad. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Just gonna stop. I gotta get a feel for that. Do I want to go down to four? It's like being in a fishbowl in here, and you're going so fast. We weren't going fast. <laughs> you're like, we're going so fast. I'm like, we're not even at this. So fast. I didn't get up to top speed. Okay. That's guys. an that's like the one where I could easily get up to top speed. First impressions. First time driving down the road. Mostly fine. Uh, if there wasn't somebody in the passenger yelling dramatic things. <laughs> we're going so fast when we're going 40 miles an hour. Would have been a little smoother, but overall, went pretty smooth. You did a good job. Almost stalled it on the turn, but I uh, caught it. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna feel for it. Unfortunately, the little light indicator for the gears is not working. Um, long term, not like something you would even need, but could be super useful right now for just learning where you're at. <laughs> so hopefully it's just a bulb and we can fix that. I can't wait to drive some more. <laughs> we have kept you waiting for long enough. This is our brand new house. Unimog. <laughs> oh. Mog dogs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so crazy to see this thing in person. We've been looking at it for a year basically in pictures. It's finally here. Had to come across the ocean. This is wild. <laughs> it's, it's wild. <laughs> I have champagne. I have champagne flutes. All right. We have been waiting so long for this vehicle. We had to get some champagne. We have champagne flutes. And we are going to pop the champagne right now because we finally have the vehicle. You know how to, how to do this? Oh, it feels like it. <laughs> I, yeah, it's probably going to be a mess. Have you ever opened a bottle of champagne? Uh, like at some point, pretend we won the Super Bowl or something. We did win the Super Bowl. The Moggy Bowl. <laughs> there <it> goes. Ah! <laughs> the surprise. Okay. Yay! Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. 
Wow, that metal part really telling it keeps it in there. We're learning things every day. You did shake it. <laughs> how to drive a Unimog, how to open a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Cheers mm. to the Unimog. Cheers to all of you who are going to be following along on this build. This is going to be fun. I can't wait to see how it turns out either. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's mm. crazy. It mm. doesn't seem real. It just does not seem real still. No. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to our Unimog, Unimog, 1987 U1300L X German Military Ambulance. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it has been a crazy, almost year long process and many years of looking at vehicles such as this. This Unimog is our dream vehicle. We moved into a camper van in 2016, and if you would have asked us if you could have any vehicle, what would you have? It would be a Unimog. Mm -hmm. And to have one, to be sitting in the cab of a Unimog, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. It doesn't seem real. I, yeah, it doesn't seem real at all. This. This is what we have wanted forever. And the fact that we actually made it happen, um, especially importing the vehicle, that's a whole process. I'm just so happy to be on the other side of this whole process <laughs> and be sitting in the cab. It's here, it's we're here. in it, we're it's driving here. it. <laughs> we are driving it and man, it's, it's crazy. It really is. I keep saying it doesn't seem real, but it still doesn't seem real even though I'm sitting in it. There's been like a lot of just Inconvenient setbacks, nothing crazy. Every time we started getting like excited, like the timeline would kick back and I would kick back. There'd be this little issue and it's, you kind of like lost that point of like, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming to like, this morning we drove in and we we're like, oh my goodness, it's Until here. Until today, It's actually yeah. here. It's, it looks, it doesn't even look real. Yeah. We got this Unimog from Atkinson Voss and they're located in the UK. And the whole process of buying the vehicle from them, they sourced it and then we bought it from them. Mm -hmm. They built the camp, sorry, there's a rifle holder here. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. They built the camper on the back and it's a composite camper. You'll notice it is not finished. The door is cut in, but there is no door, no windows installed yet because we wanted to do all of that ourselves. We wanted to use US based companies for the doors and windows. So they just cut the hole that allowed customs to see inside of the box and we're pretty much just ready to go with the build. But we are super happy with Atkinson. They were so incredibly helpful. Right now we're just kind of relishing in having the vehicle and driving it around and just being so excited about it. We will do a walk around of the vehicle, tell you all of the specifics. If you don't know what a Unimog is, type Unimog into YouTube and watch the videos that come up. This vehicle is incredible. It is a four x four vehicle. You can probably tell that by the tires that it is an off-road vehicle. The Unimog has portal axles. It has a torsion free subframe that our camper box is mounted on. There are just so many cool things about this vehicle and driving it on road doesn't do it justice. We're going to have to finish the build until we can kind of get it off road. There's not a lot of uh -huh. off roading <laughs> here in New York but we're excited to get it out west, finish the build. There's so much to do, there's so much to talk about, and we'll talk about that in another video. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of things to talk about, but yeah, put it short, it's basically the most capable vehicle in the world. Yeah. Or, or one of them, uh, in stock. Just stock, it's like amazing what it can do, and then you can obviously do even more with it. The portal axles are like a huge feature that give you so much extra clearance as well as the subframe articulating independence. The box can move independent of the cab, which is huge when you're doing any kind of off-roading. Um, man, and it's got kind of uniquely short wheelbase, the 1300. It's just long enough to have just a big enough house. You notice the box is definitely smaller than the bus. Mm -hmm. So we are going down about three feet in space. So new design, new layout to maximize the smaller space. Definitely worth the trade-off. Maybe we'll figure out down the road if it's too cozy or not, but 
we thought it was well worth the trade-off of having a little more space back there to have a way better vehicle. Uh, we are excited. It's just gonna, it's a lot. So this is just a start. <laughs> we'll go into a lot of details as we go on, but day one, we're just trying to get used to driving it on road <laughs> so that eventually we can get good at it off road. It's amazing. If you follow us here on YouTube, you're probably following us from the shuttle bus and we absolutely love our shuttle bus and our house that we built inside of the shuttle bus. What we were really looking for, what we have been lacking the last eight years is off-road capability. We wanted a very capable vehicle and we really ran that over the finish <laughs> line. <laughs> We really went for it. By getting a Unimog, but now we have that capability. We still love our house in the bus, so we're gonna build something fairly similar on the back of the Unimog. And like I said, this is a composite camper, so the walls are the insulation. There's no metal framing in it, so you're kind of getting rid of some of that thermal bridging. It'll be way better insulated for us. I'm talking too much about it. I'm way too excited. <laughs> we'll tell you about all of that later on. Yes. Guys, we we bought a Unimog. <laughs> We're in a Unimog. We're going to build a Unimog. Unimog. Yeah. All right, let's go drive this thing. <sighs> all right. We will see you guys next week with a brand new video, and we will talk a lot more about this project. We'll see you soon. Later. Terrible jump there. Woo! Ah! Here he's still in the bumper. Oh. Kinda. <laughs> I don't know if I'll try to say that. It's here. It's here! Oh my gosh.